Hello and welcome to this Life Rooms video on reducing avoidance. My name is Ben and this is Tom. Hi. And we're both learning facilitators at the Life Rooms. So what do we mean by reducing avoidance? Well, I guess when we're feeling anxious, we tend to avoid things. Um, Tom, what sort of things do you think you know, we might avoid? Yeah, so for me, it's, it's a case of, it, it makes sense to avoid things sometimes. It's when, when we're faced with anxiety provoking activities or situations, it's almost natural to, to want to avoid those things and, and withdraw. The problem is, as, as we both know, is that the more that you avoid these things, the more bigger challenge it becomes. It becomes a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that these things become more and more of a big deal and scarier and scarier prospects, don't they? Yeah, the longer you leave it, the worse it will get. And what this really is about is about, in a kind of structured way, challenging that and, and really facing our fears to a certain extent and putting ourselves in those difficult situations. And, and it's, it, you know, it's by far, it's far from easy, but by doing this, we can really open up our, our lives again, really, because what happens when we start avoiding things, as we know, is, is that we sort of, that our lives, our worlds narrow and shrink mm -hmm. so that we, we end up doing fewer and fewer things. And, and by following this simple sort of technique, really, we can liberate ourselves and, and, and live a, a far better standard of life. Definitely, and we'll, we'll get to, to this in a minute, but first of all, um, I think it'd be quite nice if we shared, you know, Absolutely. one or two of the things that we actually used to avoid. Yeah, um, sure. That we've kind of managed to overcome. Yeah. Uh, so Tom, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, um, one of the things, uh, well, avoidance is a big, well, still is a big issue to a certain extent for me, but I've, I've overcome a lot of the things that I avoided. And one of the things that I worked through with my then CBT therapist was uh, avoiding put, using the gas on, on the oven. Now, for, the, for me, this was, this was a real challenge because um, the fear was is that I'd, I'd, I would leave the gas on and potentially cause harm to myself or others. So, so this was quite a scary one for me, but much in the way that we're about to talk about um, with the exposure plan that we've got on the board here, I, I, I created a list of which the, using the gas was a part of that list. And mm -hmm. I approached it in a very structured way using steps. And the more that I had a go at this, the easier it became really. And so it was, it was a case of maybe at the beginning, it was just, you know, putting one ring on the, the, the gas stove and then maybe making a small meal, followed by making a large meal. And you know, I, I'm, I'm pleased to say that now, as I've, <laughs> as I've mentioned in other videos, I really enjoy my cooking now. So, so this is a, a really good example of how, for me, you know, my, my sort of horizons broadened significantly. Um, through, through, through this technique, and it wasn't easy, but you know, yeah. I, I now really enjoy cooking. What about you, Ben? Um, th that, that sounds really hard, by the way. Um, yeah. and I'm really glad that you're able to sort of yeah. enjoy cooking and, and all that now. Um, for me, it, it was actually trains. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I basically, for about a year, I couldn't get on a train. Um, I felt that you know, they just caused too much anxiety. Mm. I thought that if I was to get on a train, I'd be like an anxious mess. Um, so I just avoided them, but I kind of got over it just by doing it really. But, mm. but you know, it wasn't as simple as that. That must have been really difficult for you. It, it, yeah, because you know, it just limits, doesn't it? Yeah. Your your, um, your life to a certain degree. You know, you you can't go to certain places and sure. and all the rest of it. You know, but um, I, I worked through it with my care coordinator at the time in, in the early intervention team, and we actually made a plan. You know, how do I make it easy for myself? So I went on the train like midday mm. uh, and, and it was virtually empty. And, and I kind of went from there really and sort of built myself up a, a bit like you said with... Yeah, and that, that's the key here, isn't it? It's about a gradual process and, and also really important to say, not beating yourself up when maybe it, it doesn't go to plan sometimes. Like maybe the first time, I don't know how it went for you, but maybe you went out and then didn't quite make it to the train station. but. That's all part of the process, isn't it? That's really that's an important part of the the, it is. the, the learning curve, I guess. It, it's a really important point, and you know, I, I've got to admit that the first few times mm. were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I right. mean. Um, yeah, and this is not, this, you know, it's not easy. This is it. No, it, it's not. But it, it's about 
it, it's the only way really we, we grow, isn't it, is, is to kind of expose ourselves to the things that we've, we've been avoiding. So th this is like the, uh, the way of, of getting over yeah, avoidance, it's, it's, isn't it's, it? It's, we call it an exposure plan and, and we, we kind of, you know, this is the way we approach it in a, in a structured way in our classes. And um, I guess the idea with this, and this is something that I did in my CBT therapy, and it sounds like you did something quite similar, um, was you, 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 what you do is you list the things that you're avoiding, so the situations or the, the circumstances which you think are going to provoke high levels of anxiety and which are really difficult and, and you know, things that if you overcome them are going to really improve your, your well-being and quality of life. So yeah. um, you list them and then you put them in order of least anxiety provoking to the most anxiety provoking. And then the idea is, as, as Exposure Plan suggests, is you, you, you expose yourself to that anxiety. So let's have a look at what we've got on, on our Exposure Plan. This is a kind of mocked up one, um, but these are quite common ones and I've, I've indeed I've, I've struggled with a couple of these in the past. So to begin with then, we've got making a coffee. Uh, do you take milk? Yes, please. Oh! I'm so sorry. Okay, and next on the list we've got um, asking for directions, which we've got at 40 out of 100 on the anxiety scale. Oh, where is this? Where's the park? I can't remember. Um, I could ask him. I'm going to go home. Okay, following on from that, the next one on the list, uh, which is actually 60 out of 100, so a little bit more anxiety provoking. That's actually answering the phone. No caller ID. I don't want to answer that. Could be anyone. Could be terrible news. No, no, I can't answer that. And finally, at the top there, as you can see, Ben, we've got at 80 out of 100, so this one is pretty anxiety provoking in our imaginary scenario. It's using a computer. Okay. Oh, anything could go wrong. I'm gonna break it. Oh, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'll try this. Oh, no. No, I can't do it. So, Tom, like, if we've got these things that we're avoiding, how do we go about tackling them? Yeah, so making a coffee. So that's, that's well, well, let's, let's hypothetically say we're, we're going to challenge these things, shall we? And it, it, it might, to some people, seem like making a coffee is, is um, easy, really, and, and, yeah. and not anxiety-provoking at all. But it's important, isn't it, to say that, you know, Everyone's anxieties are different, and it's all relative to your current, you know, well-being and, and mental state, I suppose. No, completely. And um, so making a coffee, I mean, you might have had a bad experience, for instance, in the past. That's one way in which you might be anxious moving forward yeah. with making a coffee. So in terms of this, and it is, it's, it's a straightforward process, this, but it's not easy. It's, it's, it's energy consuming, isn't it? And, and time consuming. So, you know, Go easy and, and, and don't be too hard on yourself with this. But starting with making a coffee then, I mean, I think probably what would be good is, is to begin by even just boiling the kettle because it's going to be an anxiety provoking situation altogether, isn't it? So if we, if we started off by just boiling the kettle, then maybe making yourself a cup of coffee mm. and then go on. Sorry, I was just going to say maybe with no one else around as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it, it could be that, you know, other people potentially are, you know, a source of that anxiety. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole host of, of reasons, aren't there? But yeah, but yes, that's a, so it's about breaking it down into steps, isn't it? And, and uh, you know, we and making it a little bit more manageable. And then finally, I suppose, giving it a go and making somebody else a cup of coffee. And, mm -hmm. and then here's the key with this is about doing it a few times, isn't it? 
because the first time you do it, it might be unsuccessful, which is absolutely fine, as we've suggested. You know, that's all part of the process. Yeah. And it, it's going to be anxiety provoking. It, you know, this is, this is, unfortunately, this is kind of, this is a part of the process. It's about sitting with that anxiety. And we've both been there, haven't we? It is. It, it's, yeah, I like that, that word, sitting, mm. or, or you could say tolerating yeah. the, the uncomfortable, awkward feeling of anxiety. Because anxiety itself can't kill you. Mm. It, you know, exactly. It, it's, it's, it's just a very, very uncomfortable, well, it's not just, it is a very uncomfortable yeah. feeling, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And the idea with this is, is the more you make somebody a cup of coffee, the easier it becomes. And hopefully, if we keep making that cup of coffee, do it a few times, as many times as you need to until you feel like you can do it without anxiety, then you can do it relatively anxiety free. And at that point, you'd move on to the next one. Would you take milk? Yes, please. Thank you very much. So Tom, the, the next one there is asking for directions, mm. which is 40 out of 100. Yeah, yeah, okay. So at this point, it'd be good to say that maybe sometimes we, we actually list these in the wrong order to begin with. You know, this isn't set in stone. Maybe originally our, our, in our hypothetical situation, we'd listed that below making a coffee and mm. and that's okay you know we, we these are predicted anxiety levels as it says and yeah. we don't know until we try it so it, it may be that in this case this was originally a 10 out of 100 and mm -hmm. we've bumped it up to 40 but how how would we how would we go about sort of challenging that one asking for directions what do you think well i guess maybe for me i'd actually write a script that's like a really good one how would how would approach somebody mm. um Maybe even practice it with um, with your your mom or your, yeah. your family or, or, or friend or. I really like that idea, because because then you you you're building in those steps again, aren't you? Which which helps make it less of a big step. Now this is a higher level of anxiety than the previous one, so it might be that this one takes a little bit longer and is a bit more challenging. But if we follow this strategy and and use those steps, hopefully we give it a go. We keep going. We keep trying. Yeah. By the end of it, we'll, we'll be able to ask for directions. And then the, the key thing is, is giving yourself a pat on the back when you get to that point. Oh, definitely. I mean, our mate Mark, who, who works with us, he uh, is always saying to the, you know, to everybody, give yourself a pat yeah. on the back. So yeah. that, that is really important. That's huge here because this is this is t challenging, time-consuming stuff, and and it's tiring, and each each little mini win deserves, you know, deserves to be celebrated really doesn't it and, and so I think after a few goes at this with using those steps hopefully we'll be able to ask set successfully for directions. Hi yeah um, just wondering if you knew where the local park was? Yeah you know if you just go down that way just go under the bridge and, and over the bridge okay. and it'll just be on the left. Oh that's really good thanks very much. Not at all. The next one, Tom, is um, answering the phone, mm. which um, again, you know, to some people, you know, might not even be on their radar of anxiety, but sure. actually for, for some people it really is very well, anxiety provoking. Absolutely, Ben, and, and I think for me this was one that was previously a, a real challenge for me, especially when the, the call is, 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 is an unnamed call and you don't know who's ringing you. Oh sure, like the no caller ID. Exactly. and and. and could he, you know, unexpected calls at unexpected times while you're doing something else. These can all uh, contribute to this sort of, uh, this, this really difficult, anxious situation. So we've got that at 60, haven't we? So th this, this, is, this is quite anxiety provoking really, isn't it? The, the, yeah. the, the thought of answering the phone. How, how do you think we'd go about tackling this one or challenging this fear? It's a difficult one. Mm. Um, I, I did go through a spell myself and mm. not answering the phone. And um, I guess, you know, the way that I kind of got over yeah. it was just, was just to answer the phone, but yeah. there's, there's obviously a process that kind of leads up to that. Yeah. So again, it's thinking about, you know, what am I going to say? Yeah. You know, a little bit of a, a script or some sort of preparation for... Yeah, or, or I guess an idea I've got would be to maybe ask somebody that you know to, to ring you. Yeah. So, so, so at, a, at a planned time, so that you get into the habit of 
of answering the phone and then maybe ask them to withhold their number and ring you at a planned time. The next step could be to ask them to withhold their number and mm. ring you at an unplanned time. We can, we can build in as many steps as we feel appropriate to, 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 to alleviate this anxiety and the idea is hopefully, again this might take a little bit longer, um, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get to the point that we can answer the phone. The, the, the key here is, is that you know, we, we, we've got We've got a bit of momentum behind us as well, haven't we? No. Well, this is it. I mean, hopefully, if we've if we've already you know made the coffee and we've yeah. um, you know we've asked for directions, our confidence might be up a little bit. Yeah. We might feel in a, you know in a better place to and, um, answer the phone and um, and continue to celebrate those successes. Yeah. No caller ID. I wonder who that could be. Yeah. I'd probably better answer it. Could be important. Hello. Oh hi. Yeah, yeah. It's actually in my diary for tomorrow at ten. But thank you very much for the reminder. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you there tomorrow. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. That wasn't too bad. Okay. So the the most anxiety provoking one, you know, on our kind of imaginary list yeah. is, is using a computer, which is yeah. 80 out of 100. Yeah. So why, why do you think that, why, why could that be anxiety provoking? Well, I guess for some people, like I, I think actually of, you know, my little nan mm. um, and, you know, she's in her mid eighties and, mm. and I think she's never seen a computer in her life. So the idea of her using one would, would be very anxiety provoking, but there's a whole host of other reasons why people could be really anxious about using a computer. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, you know, it's, it's a, a, a new computer, you open it and it, it's got so many options and, and, and functions and computers change so often, don't they? And, you know, uh, this year's computer is so much different from last year's computer. I mean, I, I know sometimes when I update my, you know, my, my computer with the new software, I find it a bit stressful trying to get used to the new, mm. the new systems and I guess one of the worries is, is if you're not fully aware of how to use it, is something going catastrophically wrong with the computer, isn't it? Yeah, and, and some people I think might be anxious about you know, doing um, some harm to the computer, maybe you know, yeah. wrecking it or something because sure. they've just turned it on, yeah. uh, whereas in actuality that's not going to happen obviously. But because you know, these things are expensive, aren't they? And, and if, if you don't feel comfortable with using it, you know, you're bound to feel a bit anxious about, about the, the, the prospect of, of potentially causing harm to it. Yeah. Um, so this, this one is right at the top of our list. So I think, again, you know, we, can, we could anticipate that this one might be a little bit more difficult again. Um, saying that though, sometimes once you've got that wind in your sails and, and the, this sort of um, the momentum behind you, sometimes, you know, much in the way that things can come out more difficult than anticipated. Sometimes they can be a little bit easier, so don't rule out that possibility as well. But let's assume that this, this one is 80 out of 100. How could we maybe go about challenging that, um, that anxiety? Well, again, you need to plan, don't you? So, um, you know, one thought that sort of springs to mind is get someone that you, that you feel comfortable enough with mm. to, to kind of work with you on the, on the computer. Yeah, um, maybe just without you even touching it to begin with, take you through it, show you the ropes, um, show you some simple applications. Definitely. I guess the next thing you could do is, is, is even just opening it up, just that, you know, just to get a feel for the machine itself and then gradually maybe using it more and more, a little bit at a time, 10 minutes, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there and then, you know, opening yourself up to the internet, maybe word processing, all of these different things and you know, the key is, again, is to, in, in, in reducing avoidance, is to, to keep practicing this. And yeah. it will be very anxiety provoking at the beginning. There's no getting around that. No. But the more you practice it, the easier it gets. And th that sensation of, of, of really having achieved something, and I, I, you know, I really, I can, I've, I've, I've experienced it. It's, it's magical, it's liberating. Mm -hmm. When you get to the point where you can, say, use a computer, the, the opportunities are endless then, aren't they? Well, it, yeah, it, it just opens you up, doesn't it, to, to so much that you can, you know, access and, and so many resources and so much you can do. And, it, you, know, in, in, uh, you know, in the modern day, it's really important, isn't it, to be able to use a computer if, if possible. So yeah. 
this this is this is a this is really important and I think again practice makes perfect to a certain extent with this and mm -hmm. if we keep challenging that anxiety I think we'll we'll get to the the point where we probably can use a computer okay let's see we'll give this a go right I've got it on I just don't know how do I get the internet I suppose I could ask I could ask Ben yeah why not uh, ben, would you mind giving me a hand? Of course, yeah. Um, I've managed to get the computer on, but I, I just don't know how to get the internet up and I'm feeling a bit anxious about it. Any chance you could give me a hand? Of course, yeah. Do you know what? There's nothing to worry about. You're not going to, like, wreck it or anything. No. What you do is you just click on that icon there and then you just type in whatever it is that you want to search for. Wow. It's that easy? Yeah. That's brilliant. Thanks so much. Not at all. Okay, so this, this exposure plan is, it's not set in stone. You know, th there might be other ways that you can, um, that you can discover to, to kind of expose yourself, if you like, to the things that you avoid. But we've found ourselves that it's worked for us, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, it's, 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 it's this sort of kind of structured approach we, and, and putting it on paper. All these things we talk about in other sessions and videos as well, and mm. it's really good to kind of lay it out in this in this kind of graphic way. I think definitely, and, and I think it's just really useful, you know, noting down everything that you avoid, and then you can you can see well which one's the most yeah. winnable. What what's the most winnable fight first? Exactly, and and I guess it's at this point, good to reiterate that you know there's going to be bumps in the road. It's not a linear process necessarily. It's kind of A to B to A to C to B. It, 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 it keeps going and, and it's an ongoing process. I still avoid things. I'm sure you do still. I do. And I still use this, this, this method um, and it still helps me. It's, 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 it's difficult this. It's, it's, it's very um, anxiety. It can be anxiety provoking in and of itself, but the end game is, it's so liberating and it's, it's wonderful when you, you're able to do these things that have been causing you so much difficulty. Well, the world just, you know, opens up for you, doesn't it? Um, I, I can remember, you know, in those days before I was getting on that train and, you know, I was just staying in, in the flat. Yeah. Um, my, my world was very yeah. narrow um, and, and now it, it's opened up. Not to say that, you know, as you just said, you know, still experience anxiety you know we're not saying that yeah. this is kind of a cure for anxiety sure. but it's certainly a good structured way to mm. just to tackle you know those things that you avoid because of anxiety and i guess one final thing to, to say would just be to you know use the support around you you know yeah. we're, we're, it's, it's it's it doesn't have to be you on your own doing this does it we, we can accept support from family friends loved ones uh, therapists yeah. gpns you know tap into that and, and, and take it at your own pace? I think you, you have to, you have to have the, the help of others. Um, I think that, you know, society today, in, particularly in the West, it kind of tells us that we have to do things by ourselves, but actually we, we need other people, we need, we need the help of others. Um, so that's been really useful, thanks Tom. Yeah, and I, just one final, final thing would just be to say, you know, this is, this is, this is not easy and give yourself that big pat on the back, as Mark Bell always says, because yeah. this is, incredible stuff when you get around to achieving these goals so good luck good luck and um, please access our pathways advisors if you need support um, also just a little mention about the evaluation forms if you could fill one of those in we'd be really grateful uh, so thank you very much thank you very much